We all have experimented with magnets in our lives, but how do we actually calculate the magnitude and direction of a magnetic field? When it comes to magnetism in AP Physics C, one of the most important equations to know is Ampere's Law. Ampere's Law states that the loop integral of the dot product between the magnetic field and loop infinitesimals equals mu naught times the current enclosed by the loop, where mu naught is the permeability of free space, which has a value of 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7. Now, before diving into some Ampere's Law examples, we need to take a closer look at each component of the equation, starting first with the loop integral. Similar to Gaussian surfaces, the process of using Ampere's law involves choosing an Amperean loop, or a closed loop to integrate around, along with a loop direction. The rest of the equation is built on your chosen loop and direction. The ds vector represents infinitesimal lengths of your loop. Now, the current enclosed is based on the amount of current penetrating through your closed loop where the sign of this current is determined by the right-hand rule. Curling your right hand around the direction of your Empyrean loop, all currents pointing in the same direction as your thumb are positive currents, while those pointing opposite to your thumb are negative. With all of this being said, solving Ampere's Laws questions can be simplified into three main steps. First, choose your Empyrean loop and loop direction that makes use of the symmetries of the problem. Second, calculate the enclosed current using the right-hand rule trick mentioned before. Finally, combine all of your components into the Ampere's Law equation to solve for the magnetic field. Let's see this process in action, with three common current geometries you may come across, starting first with a magnetic field outside of an infinitely long current-carrying wire. For the sake of visualization, let's take a look at a wire with a current I that is directed out of the page. Because wires are cylindrically symmetric, a great Ampyrean loop choice would be a circle of radius r that's concentric with the wire's axis, with the direction we'll choose to be counterclockwise arbitrarily. For step 2, the current enclosed is simply i, but let's see what sign it has according to our loop direction. Curling our right hand around our thumb points towards us, or out of the page, in the same direction as the wire's current. For this reason, the current enclosed is positive i. As for step 3, let's put all these pieces into our equation. Realizing that, due to the cylindrical symmetry, the magnetic field will be circular around our current carrying wire, we can simplify the loop integral to simply b times 2 pi r, as the b and ds vectors will always align parallel. Solving for b, we can arrive at an equation for the magnetic field outside of an infinite current carrying wire. For our next common scenario, let's find the magnetic field associated with this same exact current carrying wire, but the magnetic field inside of the wire itself. For step 1, because the symmetry doesn't change, let's still take our Ampyrean loop to be a circle of radius small r, such that small r is less than the actual radius of the wire traced counterclockwise. However, finding the current enclosed in this loop this time is not so straightforward, as only a portion of the given total current i is penetrating our selected Ampyrean loop. To find the enclosed current, we can make use of proportions. Equating the proportions of the areas of the loop and cross-sectional area of the wire to the proportions of the currents, the enclosed current is not too hard to find, with its sign still being positive through the right-hand rule. Finally, just as with the case outside of the wire, let's apply Ampere's Law. Since intuitively, the magnetic field will still be circularly uniform and point in the same direction as before, we can apply the exact same simplifications to find the magnetic field inside of a current-carrying wire. One final common wire geometry you'll come across is a long coil of current-carrying wire, more commonly known as a solenoid. Solenoids have uniform magnetic fields inside of them, which have directions found using the right-hand rule, curling your fingers along the direction of the current, while everywhere else on the outside has no magnetic field created. To solve for the magnetic field inside of a solenoid, let's look at the solenoid with constant current I and a turn density, or number of coils per unit length, small n. Because our magnetic field is uniform and straight inside, let's make our Empyrean loop a rectangle with height h and length l that is parallel to the solenoid's axis. In addition, let's integrate along this rectangle in the counterclockwise direction to align with our magnetic field. For step 2, it's important to note that the current enclosed is not actually just i, but rather all of the i's from each individual coil combined. To find this value, we simply need to multiply i by the number of coils in our Empyrean loop, or i times the quantity small n times l. Using the right-hand rule, we can see that this value for our counterclockwise direction is positive. Finally, let's plug these values into Ampere's law. For the left and right sides of our rectangle, the integral will actually become zero, as the b and ds components are perpendicular to each other, making their dot product zero. Similarly, because the top side has no magnetic field created outside, the integral along the top edge will also become zero. 
What we're left with is a simple line integral that allows us to find the magnetic field inside of a solenoid. While magnetic fields are often hard to visualize, using this three-step process will make finding these magnetic fields much easier and straightforward. In addition, when it comes to changing or non-uniform magnetic fields, many other equations and strategies are required. But for now, you can feel good that you've just finished learning about how to apply Ampere's Law.